This is my thirteenth video on my attempts to construct a small OO gauge layout. See part one for my reasons for doing this, and my lengthy series on my N-gauge railway modelling for more interesting stuff with trains actually running, etc. For this part, I thought I'd take a break from card buildings, though I do still have a couple more to do, and work up a couple of Daypol X Airfix plastic kits, the level crossing and the kiosks and platform steps. These are polystyrene construction kits that date back to somewhere around the 1970s. They were originally released by Airfix as part of their Trackside series. Then when Airfix got out of railway models, these kits passed to Daypol, who still produce and sell them. In this case, I was building them from current Daypol production, not from the original Airfix versions. If they're still using the original moulds, they've worn well. There was some flash, but generally the condition of the parts was pretty good, except for some transit damage resulting from the kits being packed in plastic bags rather than boxes. Unfortunately, packing delicate polystyrene parts in bags tends to be a recipe for damage. Airfix did originally sell the trackside kits in boxes, but Airfix had switched to packing in bags even before the kits moved to Daypol. Daypol must have done something to the moulds, at least, since the parts are clearly marked Daypol rather than Airfix. I worked with the level crossing kit first. I bought this specifically because I was hoping that it would enable me to work up the rather ugly Backman Easy Track power feeder track on my layout into something more acceptable in appearance. Here are the contents of the kit after unpacking from the bag. One of the gates was quite badly bent and had cracks around the middle because of the, you know, the transit in the bag and being squashed. I did my best to straighten it out and glue the cracks, but given how delicate the bars were, I couldn't get it really completely straight. This is the downside of shipping kits like this in bags. As is noted on the instruction sheet, this kit basically builds a single track level crossing, but it includes some extra parts specifically so that two kits can be combined to build a double track crossing. Most particularly the large square flat piece at bottom right would only be needed if you were building a double crossing. In fact, I had no intention of building this kit as intended. As noted, I wanted to use such of the parts as were applicable to make some sort of adaption around my Backman power feeder track. Here you can see where I'm trying one of the ramp parts from the Daypol kit against the Backman power track. I've cut out a rectangle from the front of the ramp to allow it to fit around the socket on the Backman track. I figured that if I painted the tops of the kit ramps black, they should integrate quite well with the Backman track. Here you can see the ramp with the cutout tried on the other side of the Backman track. On the near side you can see the feeder wire to the Backman track, which I am trying to hide. Now I've cut out a rectangle from the other ramp, and I'm trying both of them against the Backman track. It looks as though this should work up to a point at least. So now I continue with assembly of the relevant kit parts. The pivots for the gates glue to the larger posts. The top pins from the gates will go into the holes in those little circular parts. The L-shaped pieces for fitting the posts glue into the ramps. So each ramp is made up with two holes on the left for the large post and the gate pin, and one hole on the right for the smaller post. Next I tried to make up the gates. Each gate gets a circle, which will be red, and a lamp on top. The circles came in halves, with lugs on the back of each half to fit around the gate bars. I couldn't get the circle halves to fit together properly, with both halves having their lugs fitted over the gate bars. So I cut the lugs off one half of each circle. This allowed me to fix the circles to the gates, with the halves of the circles joining up neatly, which I just couldn't do with the lugs on both halves. Note that the left-hand gate, as seen here, is somewhat bent and damaged, which happened due to the poor packaging. I put the side pieces onto the ramps, that is, below each side, but I had to cut them down a little at the ends to get the ramps to fit properly over the Backman track. Now I painted the parts. I sprayed the ramps black and the gates and posts white, and then hand-painted the cobbles on the ramps grey and the gate circles and lamps red. Because the ramps were sloping up more sharply to meet the Backman track, the side pieces didn't reach the ground. 
I cut some extra pieces from parts of the kit I wasn't using and glued these to the sides to build them up. Then I painted those extra side parts black and glued the posts to the ramps pivoting the gates. And here are the finished ramps and gates on the layout. Definitely not perfect, but I think this can more or less get away with being seen as a level crossing. It's certainly an improvement over the way the Bachman track looked before. Now on to the other Daypol kit for kiosks and platform steps. The parts for this all came loose in the bag with no sprues at all. In addition to the plastic parts, a paper sheet is provided for details, but this is just printed paper, not decals. Here are the instructions for this kit, not terribly complicated. Here are the parts for the first kiosk sorted out, although at this point I missed one of the long walls. There is no floor, so the walls glue to the roof, so of course you have to remember to glue them on upside down when you're doing it like this, with a counter and the door opening up. Then the other long wall with a counter glues on. And then the final curved end wall. As seems to be usual with arrangements of this kind, it was difficult to make things line up properly when putting in the last part. Finally, for this kit, edging parts are glued around the roof and the door is glued in place. The steps and their top platform came as a single part. This was quite warped as it came out of the bag, as can be seen here. Fortunately, it was possible to force the warp out of the step part when gluing it to the side wall. Here the fence is tried on the steps, but not glued on at this point. I was thinking of using these steps in place of the rather awkward ones I had built to go behind the Airfix booking hall. Given that I was intending to place these steps behind the booking hall like this, I thought they would work better without the other side wall and fences, since that side was going to be butting right up against the platform and the building. And these are the parts of the other kiosk, which goes together in much the same way, with the walls gluing around the roof, and in this case just a single placard on the roof. So here are all the components of this kit assembled as I intended to have them. I had even more problems getting the walls to join up evenly on the second kiosk. So unfortunately there are some rather visible gaps. I just couldn't get them to go round the roof and all join up properly. Now I did an initial spray paint of all the pieces. One kiosk green, the other black, the steps brick red, and the fence off-white. I hand-painted the steps grey. A second coat improved these somewhat. For this kiosk I used an old toothbrush to apply light brown paint, aiming for some sort of wood effect. I also painted the roof of the green kiosk black. All of the paint is still wet here. The only pieces supplied in the Daypol kit for the side windows of this kiosk depicted fruit. I didn't want to finish it as a fruit-selling kiosk, I've never seen such a thing on a railway station, so I cut pieces left over from the Metcalf Corner shop kit I built recently, depicting boxes of chocolates, etc., and used those for the side windows of this kiosk. I used the side pieces for the centre openings, depicting smoking products. There were also pieces that were the message about fruit and I used the generic Lewis top banner. The, uh, there was another banner that specifically said it was a produce kiosk. Maybe kiosks for fruit and produce were more common on railway platforms before I was born or something, but I never remember seeing one. Um, here's a picture at this point of the kiosk without flash. Even though I've gone over the Lewis banner with a blue marker, white paper is still showing. Here I've done some more work with a blue marker on the banner. Uh, this news poster about the tiger also came from the Metcalf Corner shop kit, and I didn't use it in that kit, so I put it on the side of the kiosk here. The only pieces in the Daypol kit for the centre shelves depicted apples and oranges, which was not what I wanted. I messed around with a piece of blank paper to create a template the size of the shelves, basically cutting the angle of a triangle of paper down progressively until it fitted correctly against the edges of the shelves. I took a picture of a candy display from the internet and printed a couple of copies of it really tiny on my PC printer. 
Then I used a paper template to cut out those candy pictures to the correct shape for the shelves. So now I had two coloured pieces for the shelves. You can't really tell that they show candy, but they could. And I glued those in place on the shelves. So now this is a kiosk for sweets and tobacco products. I cut out the thin W.H. Smith pieces from the Daypol kit paper sheet. These are perfectly appropriate, as W.H. Smith had kiosks on railway stations from very early on, starting, I believe, back in the 19th century. I glued those W.H. Smith pieces over the kiosk openings, blended in with a green marker. Then I glued on additional pieces from the kit sheet, representing papers on the shelves, posters on the front, and top banners. There were pieces that could be glued around the curves at the end of the kiosk, but I thought these weren't really necessary and were probably best avoided as they weren't needed and it would be hard to get them to stay on well. It was hard enough getting the flat pieces glued down as the printed sheet was quite wrinkly when I got it. Here are the steps after their additional coat of paint with the fence in place. And here are all of the items from this kit finished as far as I intended to take them. So I detached the steps that I had made from the back of this station and installed the steps from this kit instead. I do think that they are better. You can see why I didn't want to install the fences on the other side of the steps. They wouldn't have made any sense with the steps used in this way. I put this kiosk onto the smaller station. This kiosk has a blank back and so can fit on a narrower platform. The back of the kiosk can reasonably go right up against a wall, which still leaves around six feet of scale distance here between the kiosk and the edge of the platform. A bit tight, but six feet was the minimum width for passenger platforms. I put the other kiosk onto the larger station, which has a wider platform. This kiosk really needs a wider platform, as it has counters on both sides. So it wouldn't make sense to have it up against a wall. This way there's room for passengers to access both sides of the kiosk. So there we are, a couple more little items for the layout. I do have quite a few figures and some other odds and ends for the platforms, but it probably makes sense to finish the ground a bit more before trying to place those kind of details.